All right, today we're going to talk about DNA. It stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. Very, very long name, but you'll see that it can be represented with DNA all of the time. DNA is what makes everything about you work. Humans have 46 chromosomes. Other animals have different amounts of chromosomes, but we have, as humans, 46 chromosomes, 23 pair. You get 23 chromosomes from your mom and 23 chromosomes from your dad. So you get half your chromosomes from your mom, half from your dad. Together, make 46 chromosomes that make you. Tells everything about you. Tells you what eye color you'll have, uh, how tall you'll be, what size hand you'll have, uh, how your nails are formed. It's everything about you and me comes from our chromosomes. Now, we haven't always known what DNA was because it was a secret code. As a matter of fact, what we're going to talk about today is the beginning of unlocking that secret code. The problem with DNA was that we didn't know really what it meant. What we found out was that DNA had three, excuse me, four different parts. A's, adenine, T, thymine, C, cytosine, and G, guanine, and those were the four things that were found in all of DNA. As a matter of fact, A's go with T's, C's always go with G's. That's the only combinations. G's and C's go together, and A's and T's go together. Now, the easy way to remember it is A and T both have straight lines, so they go together. C's and G's are curved letters, so they go together, so that's an easy way to remember it. Now, if you take a piece of DNA, I'm just picking some what we call nucleotides, just a word that sometimes they use. Nucleotides are going to be A's, T's, C's, and G's. I'm going to give you a second. You may want to pause the video real quick and jot down this piece of DNA. All right, now that you've paused and you've written this down, let's talk about I'm going to take this word out. Let's talk about what is called the complementary complementary strand. They love to use this word as well. Complementary means it complements it. It goes with it. Well, we know that A's go with T's. T goes with A. C goes with G. G goes with C. C goes with G. C goes with G. T is A. A is T. This is C and G go together and G and C go together. So this is a complementary strand. Now this would be a piece of DNA, but it's not really ever in a straight line like this. As a matter of fact, it looks more like a, oh, that's not a great picture, here's a better picture of a piece of DNA. They call it a double helix, and that double helix, it almost looks, and they're attached through here like this. You probably, you'll remember pictures like this. It looks like you took a ladder and just sort of twisted it on itself. But we draw it in a straight line so we can put it on paper very easily. Now, inside this DNA could be anything. That's what was so confusing about, or the secret code that had to do with DNA. The A's and T's and C's and G's, it depended on the combination on what it meant. So it took us a really long time to figure out what it meant. Now, what we're going to do in this activity is we're going to take that DNA, and we'll go ahead and give you a title real quick. We're going to talk about DNA replication means to reproduce or, I'll give you a better word, duplicate your DNA. So we're going to go ahead and start with a, a, another piece, fresh piece of DNA, and let's take uh, T-A-C-C-G-A-C-T-A. -C -C -A. I'll give you a second to jot that down. You may want to pause. All right, and then we'll take the complementary strand, A T G. G, C, T, G, A, T. There's my complementary strand. That works out pretty good, except we're going to add something on here. T, G, G, C, T. We'll just take that. And so what would go with that would be A, C, C, G, A. You may want to pause real quick and get that in, get that picture. Now here's what's happening. Whenever we want to replicate or reproduce our DNA, here's why we would do that. We talked about in the last session that you're going to reproduce cells sometimes. Cells get old. Cells need to be 
uh, changed out. Sometimes there's damage to a cell. And so you have to get a new cell. In order to do that, you're going to take the secret code of one cell and you're going to give a copy to the other cell. So here's how it works. An enzyme comes along, and you'll notice from this picture, it almost looks like a zipper. And that's exactly what the enzyme does. It takes and it starts to unzip the DNA. Now what's special about this is that when it starts to uh, unzip it, a, a weird process starts to take place. And let me explain. A's and T's and C's and G's are floating around in the cell looking for somewhere to hook on. And so they're just floating along, sort of like a piece of Velcro. And so what happens is when you get to a point where it's open like this, automatically they start plugging in where they go. T's go with A's, C, G, G, C, G, C, T, A. And so they just find a place to plug on. The same thing happens here. A goes with T, G goes with C, C goes with G, C goes with G, A goes with T. And so they just plug on. Now you'll notice if I cover up my DNA right here, it's exactly the same from here to the end. G, excuse me, T, G, G, C, T. T, G, G, C, T. A, C, C, G, A. A, C, C, G, A. They're exactly the same. You're duplicating your DNA. So what happens is as that enzyme slowly opens up that piece of DNA, it's going, all these other A's and T's and C's and G's are going to plug in, and when you get to the very end, you're going to have two strands that look identical to each other. That's going to take a little bit to happen because you've got to do all 46 chromosomes. So it does it pretty quickly in the cell, but it takes a little bit of time. And so what ends up happening is you have a cell that no longer has 46 chromosomes. It has 92 chromosomes. Well, a cell cannot have, a human cell cannot have 92 chromosomes in it, so it's going to have to split into two, and what's going to happen is that you're going to get two cells that each have 46 chromosomes, and they look just like the original. So when, if you look back at your notes to the cell in mitosis from our last lesson, you'll see that when we wrote interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, in prophase, your DNA doubles, this is how it happens. You take the DNA, you unzip it, you plug in the parts that are floating around like Velcro, and by the time you've unzipped it all the way to the end, you now have two sets that look identical to each other. So you end up having one set that goes in one cell, and you have another set that goes in another cell. And now both cells are identical to each other, and they have exactly the same chromosomes. This is how you duplicate your cells and the DNA that's in them.